Welcome to First Presbyterian Church. I'm so glad to see all of you here. I am Mary McCord. I am not Heather Jepson, but she's here, guys. <laughs> Heather, we are so glad you're here. It's so wonderful to see your smile. So, other announcements. Uh, Next week is our homecoming, sitting out here watching the parade on Saturday at 9 o'clock. We have hot chocolate, coffee, donuts, all sorts of goodies, and it's just a really good time. And this is where, if they're a band, they stop and they play a thing, or if they're dancers, they stop and they do routine. So this is a great place. Bring your um, chairs your lawn chairs, or we'll, we'll get some folding chairs out there. But come join us. We'd love to see you on Saturday. Next Sunday in the pulpit is Dr. Amber Clifford Napoleon, and she is a prolific writer, a leader in our church of the Presbyterian Women and the Rainbow Coalition, and she does all sorts of things. I'm not capturing all of it, but I know it would be wonderful. I, I welcome you back next Sunday. Um, November 3rd is All Saints Sunday. November 10th, we're going to have a pizza party after worship. So we're going to have a pizza party at Pizza Hut, and we want the youth that are in fourth grade or older and their parents to come. So please put that on your calendar. I know that I have other people uh, that have announcements. Susan Seip is going to come and give us session notes. That pizza party on the 10th will be right after we have our congregational meeting, which is one of my parts of my report. The session has called a congregational meeting for November 10th, right after worship, for the purpose of discussing increasing the amount that we draw from our um, memorial gifts funds in the foundation. You'll be getting more information about that, but please be plan to be here. And then families will just meet out at uh, Pizza Hut right afterward. I hope the meeting won't take real long. The session continues to explore ways to accommodate the budget shortfall. And um, let's see, the food center has been given permission to put a 40-foot storage container on the east end of the Colton Street Center. The mission committee has distributed its contributions for the year, which is part of the budget. And I am going to read them all to you because I think it's important for you to know where your donations go. The food center re receives a monthly amount of 250. The Christmas store was sent 500. Survival 250. Big Brothers Big Sisters 250. Fuller House 250. Journey Home 1000. And from your donations in the Pentecost offering, 5 to the WS Real program, which is a program for reco credit recovery. They have lots of personal needs in that program. And the Tiger Den for the whole school district receives 228. We will be celebrating, as she, okay, she already said that. Um, you are welcome to, your, she said about the parade. Mary took care of all this. And I would like to announce that Mary, as the director, and our facility have passed all the requirements to have harvesters begin to bring us food to use for our Tuesday, Thursday meal program. So I think we need to give, yes. <laughs> Mary and all the volunteers to, who work there as part of that program. Thank you. And Susie, did, Haller, did you wanna talk about the Okay, okay, but you do have in your bulletins our special offering, uh, sowing the seeds of peace for peace and global witness. So please look at these inserts and give according to your heart and abilities. Well, I think now we'll have the choir. Oh wait, any other, any other? Another big announcement and it's my husband Henry Crow's birthday. <laughs> um, 
Any other? In it? Oh, Tom. Oh, Gardner's birthday. Okay. Good morning. Please rise as you are able for the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Come, let us worship God who created all things. We worship God who laid the foundations of the earth. Who makes the morning stars sing together. Who sends forth lightning. And who gives wisdom and understanding. Let us lift our voices in praise. Let us worship God.
Please join me in the prayer to confession. It's in your bulletin and on the screens. Merciful and gentle God, we have wanted reward without sacrifice. We have been unwilling to serve and have not humbled ourselves in obedience. Forgive our hubris, gracious God. Correct our ignorant ways and help us to know your glory through servanthood. Guide us to be true followers of your way through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. People of God, your sins are forgiven for the Lord who made all things knows our weaknesses. Therefore, turn away from sin and obey the ways of the Lord. Be reconciled to the community in service and love. Friends, know in your hearts today that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. So as we have been forgiven in Jesus Christ, we are called to forgive one another. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. So please turn and share a sign of peace with your neighbors. Hi, Bill. Hi, Martha. Oh, Hi, Anna. Hi, Anna. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi, Ted. Hi, Mary. Can't hear you. Hi, Rebecca. It's Carolyn. Hi, Rebecca. Nice to see you. Hi, Lars. Hi, Lars. Hi, everybody. Hi. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. You guys sound we great. We can hear you. We can hear you too. The sound is so much better today. It as is. long as the mics are on, we're good. So yeah. I'm trying to get everything. The hardest one is uh, the organ and the and sort of ambient stuff. We're working on it. Thank yeah. you, Lars. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Love you guys. Love, Love you too. Okay. So Lars, glad you things are on easier on for you. Hi, Susan. Hello, Susan. Um, yes, Martha, you know, has very hard, severe hearing problems and she hasn't been able to hear the much of what goes on and she can hear so much better today. She noticed it's so that's great. That's good. I'm glad we've got things kind of working. That's good. And yeah. how, how fun that your daughter's in church. Yes, she is. And there's my Mary. Hi. Love you. Love you. <laughs> love you. Hi, Neil. Did you see our Mary, Rebecca? Can't hear you, but I know I know you did. And hi, Tammy. I'm ready to and did I say go 49ers? Oh, I don't think so. I think I said go Chiefs, didn't I? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> and they're in in San Francisco. That's oh. that's gonna be a little tougher. Wish I wish we could be there to watch the game, or maybe you are. Are you guys there in San Francisco to watch the game? Yeah. <laughs> We just wish we could be, huh? We're about as far from San Francisco as you can be, but. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been before? Yeah, a few years ago. My brother lives out there. So oh. He lives out there. If I had to live in a city or visit one, I would visit San Francisco again. 
Is Anastasia there? Anastasia is here. Yeah, you just missed her coming to the screen. Oh, okay. But I think I bet she saw you were here. And then how are you, Rebecca? Well, I share a birthday with both my daughter Catherine and with Henry. So my Happy birthday is today. And birthday. Happy yeah. birthday. That's great. Yeah, my brother Henry and your daughter and you, all three of you. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And this, yeah. Everybody, this is Mary's Children, sister, Germantine. Rebecca. Oh, okay. So that's this is hi, family. Everybody. This great. is family. Hi, hi Rebecca. Carolyn, oh. Did you know that my daughter Catherine is in Ukraine? Okay. Yes, Nobody I saw that she had a, a GoFundMe. Yeah. Um, okay. Wow. Did go so it if did I go asked up. You guys, to do me a favor. Oh, bless her heart. You would. Oh, Sam's like, yeah, I'll do it. Okay. So if I said, well, sort of an embarrassing thing, would you think? Would you still do it? No. Oh, okay. Well, what if I said, uh, Abigail, I want you to do me a favor. But before I tell you, you got to promise me you'll do it. Would you do it? Uh, Ruthie, how about you? Uh, you got to promise. Oh, no. Oh, well, that changed. Well, why is that? How, how come you'll do me a favor, but then when I say, well, it's embarrassing, and you got to promise first? You don't know what it is. It's probably not something nice, right? Or I wouldn't manipulate you and make you promise first, right? Well, how about you? You love me. Would you do it? Sure. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Okay. Well, okay. Today's sermon is about James and John, and they did the same thing. They came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, will you do us a favor? He said, well, what is it? And they said, well, you got to promise first that you'll do whatever we ask. And he said, well, what is it? Right? What do you want? And uh, he didn't promise because you don't make those promises, do you? What if you can't keep it, Jackson? What do you do if somebody asks you for a favor and they make you promise, crush your heart and hope to die, stab a needle in your eye, and then they say something you can't do? Now what? Yeah, yeah, because that's manipulative. That's not nice. Well, what they wanted were, they thought Jesus was going to make a big government, and they wanted really important seats in his big government. And he said, well, I can't do that. I can't give that to you. So, you know, he said, what you're supposed to do is help other people. So this is something you can't answer. What do you do in, like, Last week or coming up, what do you do to help other people? Luna. Um, I help at the center. Yes, you Down. do. Yeah, Luna cooks meals and cleans up. Okay. How about you, Jackson? What do you do? I do my chores. Yeah, do your chores. I bet your mom thinks that's a form of helping. Do my chores. Do your chores, Abigail. I help with our pets. Yes. You feed them and clean up and all that, water them. How about you, Josephine? Chores. Do chores. Okay. So, what chores do you do? Empty the dishwasher. Yeah. Okay. I don't like to do that. I wish you were in my house. Okay. Uh, I do the dishwasher because it's on the app that my mom made me downloaded. Okay. It's on an app. Wow. Okay. So, you are being helpful, and this is what Jesus tells us to do: help others and be kind. Let's pray. Let's pray. God, thank you for these helpers and servants of yours, that even though they are young, they already know the true meaning of being a Christian and help them find ways to help in the coming weeks. Amen.
Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Job, chapter 38, verses 1 through 7. This is on page 420 of your pew Bible. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man, I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy.
second scripture reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 35 through 45. <clears throat> James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one on your left and one at your right hand, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand and my left hand is not mine to grant. It is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be the slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. So in our first Old Testament reading, God is basically saying to Job, just who do you think you are, right? I think the reading is beautiful. I think it's poetic, but it's God's way of saying, I created the heavens and the earth. I control the weather. I gave man intelligence. I provide food for all creatures, including you, and if you think you know how it's done, will you just explain it to me, right? He's putting Job in his place. Most of us have a healthy, healthy regard for the power of God. In any case, you don't want to be rude to a divine, all-powerful being, right? Don't want to get them mad. So, God's is all that in a bag of chips. Remember, the Old Testament Jews felt a very healthy regard for God. They didn't even say God's name. It was so holy. And Jesus and his disciples are Jews. Even today, it's very rude. It's very shocking to make demands of a master, a teacher, an expert, a boss. So shocking that this story of James and John coming up and saying, do what we want, is in two Gospels. Now, it's pretty much the same, but in Matthew, it's their mama who comes and kneels and says, please do whatever my sons ask of you. And then it's the same story. So this story, I think, shows a conflict between two natural human instincts to gain power and status, to have control on our lives, and to help others and serve and love. We want to do both. Let's look at that human ambition for power. James and John's request reveals their desire for high status. They want authority in Jesus' kingdom. They are working towards a political victory. Right now, nobody's really thinking about a spiritual victory. Peter has not declared, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Right? I don't think anybody thinks of Jesus as particularly divine right now. He is a Messiah to them, which means a divinely appointed king. He clearly doesn't have a kingdom yet. It's a bunch of people running around, you know, wandering the earth, preaching. But he is their teacher, a rabbi, and a miracle worker, doing wonderful miracles. So in James and John's view, their future king. So do for us whatever we ask for you is an audacious request. It's disrespectful. St. James, St. John, and Janice Joplin all had much in common. So, you know her song Mercedes? 
So if I'm going to sing the first two verses, and if you remember it, I want you to sing the last verse with me. Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? My friends all drive Porsches. I must make amends. Worked hard all my life with no help from my friends. So, oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a color these bins? My friends all have Porsches. I must make amends. Worked hard all my life with no help from my friends. So, oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? All right. So, it's pretty common. So is James and John and Janice Joplin exhibiting greed or simply exhibiting prosperity gospel? Surely you have never done this, right? You haven't done this. You've never prayed, God, just give me this one thing. I deserve this one thing. I've kept the Ten Commandments. I go to church or I'll start going if you just give me this one thing. Get me out of this situation, right? So, no, I'm not talking about, Lord, give me a Mercedes Benz, right? That's too shallow for us. Nothing that shallow. But how about, dear God, please take away the pain and I'd do anything. Please bring back my spouse. Please save my marriage. Please give me children. Heal my children. Save my children. How about I've done everything for you? Why is this happening to me? Well, I've said all of those things. Live long enough and you may say some of those things because this is life. We have probably all been demanding, arrogant, pleading, whining, manipulative, desperate. Pick an adjective and stick it in there in your prayers to God because we desperately, desperately want something. We want power and control over our own lives. God, give me what I ask of you. I deserve it. So-and-so's got it. They're not very nice, right? I deserve it. Well, how does Jesus respond to this request? Jesus rebukes James and John. He explains that this request is not about true greatness, not about places of honor. They're not his to give, but they belong to those for whom it has been prepared. Now, if I'm James and John, I have asked for something pretty darn specific. And his answer is confusing. So I'll reread it. Now, please remember, up until 50 days after the crucifixion, up until Pentecost, some of his followers were still looking for a political answer, for a political kingdom. But Jesus said to them, you don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? And they replied, we are able. And Jesus said to him, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left hand is not mine to grant. It is for those for whom it has been prepared. So I love the naivete and the greed shown here. You know, when Jesus says, can you drink my cup? They're thinking, ooh, gold cups with good wine. Yeah, we can drink that cup. And when he says, can you take my baptism? They're thinking, oh, a marble, you know, ritual bathing pool in the hot summer. You bet I could do that. Okay. But uh, he knows, Jesus knows, the cup and the baptism are his blood, his life force, his sacrifice. And it will be the blood the life force, and the sacrifice of James, John, and all of the disciples. He tells them they will have the cup and baptism. Now, they still think these are earthly perks of power, but they're not going to get to sit at the right hand and the left hand. So who do they ask? 
You know, that's what I'd be thinking if I asked about it. So if somebody's preparing it, who's that? I want to go ask them, right? In Matthew, it states that those seats are for people where the Father is preparing them for those seats. So uh, they asked for something clearly, very specific, and Jesus got all mystical and spiritual on them again. I can just imagine. It's basically a non-answer because they are not prepared for a spiritual answer to a political conundrum. And now all the other disciples hear about it, right? Gossip, gossip, gossip. Bigger, bigger, bigger. And they're mad. They're mad. So I can just imagine James and John, you know, justifying this ridiculous request. Well, our father Zebedee got stuck with all of the fishing business on his own. He's elderly, and we need to make sure that he's taken care of in his old age. And Luke says, you're a losing business. I'm a physician. I'm a trained physician, and I'm running around these villages with rednecks and rebels. You know, Luke says, you know, or Levi Matthew, he's like, I've lost my license to collect taxes. The Romans know who I am now. I'll never get that back. I can never get my, back, my business back. And Simon Peter is saying, I'm still fighting for no taxation without representation. He will not write the policy. We have to have written policy laid out. He keeps talking about spiritual stuff, you know. Plus, my mother-in-law has been sick a long time. And my wife is nagging at me to get Luke or Jesus down there to heal her. And this is just creating havoc on my family life, right? So I can just imagine, they, because they truly have, they have truly all sacrificed. This was whole families, when you think about it, that had to sacrifice when their male, you know, breadwinner went off with Jesus. So they bicker, and I'm making light of a very serious situation. They had all followed Jesus. All the communities around knew that they had followed Jesus, knew who they were, right? And in the previous generation, other claimants to Messiah, they were beheaded, their family was killed, their disciples were killed, their disciples' families were killed, the town they came from was dispersed, and sometimes the uh, agricultural land was ruined, was salted because the Romans don't play. You gonna say you're a king? We're gonna make sure that you learn not to do that, right? So these people really were sacrificing. They could not go back. So here's the point, the point of the entire story. True disciples give service. Jesus steps in and he says that true leadership involves serving others, not seeking personal power. Basically, he tells them, you're not acting any better than a Gentile. You know, we're Gentiles, did you know that? Okay. Remember, they are Jews, and they should use the law to guide their actions, and the law is full of telling leaders what to do and how to use their power and to basically be servants. So he reminds them that Gentiles have rulers, that lord it over them, and the greater the Gentiles' leader, they're more tyrannical. He says, you aren't like that. And I think he's doing positive affirmation here because they are clearly like that. They just did it, right? They are like that. And so he's trying to say, well, you know, act this other way. <clears throat> and now comes the verse that is the backbone, the final summary of this entire fiasco. Whoever wishes to be first among you must be a slave of all. 45, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And so there's a lot of discussion about this verse. What's it mean to serve and what's it mean to give your life a ransom for many? So some see this as a prophecy of his death. Some see it as substitutionary sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. We did, we did substitutionary sacrifice in uh, Sunday school today. We talked about that. Others see it 
as his death is going to be a required sacrifice so he can descend to hell and gain victory over demons and then come back in three days. Others reject substitutionary sacrifice and that is the idea that he had to die and bleed for your sins to be forgiven. So in case you're still wondering what I'm talking about. They call it, well, when I was a child, we called it plead the blood. I plead the blood of Christ to come and wash over me and save me, right? They instead see Jesus' death as an exemplary sacrifice for his followers. Jesus is the sacrifice. Jesus is the example, right? This is how we should be. <clears throat> so I like what one source said, that serve, uh, the verb for serving, really meant like when you wait tables, service right and to literally serve and through service humility and sacrifice gain life everlasting so i want to interpret this differently that he gave his life in service not that we give our death in service if that makes sense we're not dying as a service we're giving our lives as service when we use our lives to ransom others in this world, it is hard. We may not agree with the lifestyle of the person we serve. We may not like the person we serve. But if we use God's love, let it flow through us. Let it be the source of the service. We can ransom many, very many people. But if we try to have status and be greedy, we won't be ransoming anybody. We won't be accomplishing anything. So this story ends there, but our story goes on and on. We are Jesus to the world. We are the hands that care, the life that can ransom many. Only if we submit to Christ's love and reject our own desires and ambitions. Thank you.
Please be seated. Okay, this is our time for praying for each other. And if you would share for me joys and concerns, needs that you have, and we will pray as a congregation. Neil. Thanksgiving for your Oh, thanks. Well, I am just super stoked that Heather is here with us. So, that's my joy. Yes, Susan. I agree. We have a great congregation. Yeah. Okay, Shelby. That one, give me a minute. Oh. Okay, what else? Uh, Tom? Okay. From the Foley's? Yes. yes, okay. Heather. Abigail. Ruby's friend's birthday. Okay. Ruthie, I'm sorry. I, I can't see what it is. I have it. Okay, good. I uh, just was praying for Marjorie and Debbie's anniversary. Oh, yeah. Is Marjorie here? No. Okay. She is such a great volunteer and has a heart for service. Okay, I know there's somebody down here. Am I not? Okay, okay. Laura, sorry.
Amy. Oh, wow. Should we sing to Marley? Oh, okay. Then she doesn't get sung to. Tough. Okay, Amanda. That is wonderful. We're a happy group. I'm running out of room. <laughs> Yes, Ron. No, you can pray for animals. Okay. We will pray that your dog gets better. Okay, let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, you are our high priest. You've offered yourself for us with your prayers and tears, your very body. Help us pray and offer supplication for ourselves and for others. We pray for our local, national, and global church that it might exhibit the way of service in faith and in love. We pray for the international community that it might learn the way of peace. We pray for anyone who suffers. Help us to be the healing that they need. We pray for the earth. Help us to be good stewards of this beautiful planet. We remember those who have come to their eternal rest, and we wrap our loving arms of comfort around those who grieve. And we also pray for the shared joys and concerns of our own congregation. We have many joys for the sermon for multiple members of the congregation that are inspired and have been giving sermons in Pastor Heather's absence. We give praise and joy that Grace has three college acceptances and we thank you that Ms. Fowler has been helping her make good decisions as she tries to choose. We pray for Ashley Catherine and praise you for a new life on this earth. I'm sure the Foley's are so excited. We pray for Ruthie's friend's birthday, that she has a pleasant ceremony and a great party. Thank you also for Marian Hagen's birthday, Marjorie Hagen, sorry for her birthday and that she enjoy it as much as we enjoy her. We pray and praise you for our music program and for Marley and her birthday. In our concerns, please be with Mary Catherine in the Ukraine in a war-torn country as she serves to feed others and to bring hope and joy to those that are in the war zones. We pray for Lars's mom, Kathy, for her back surgery to go well, for her to be quick to heal and to find comfort from pain. We pray for Lars's friend, Mike, whose house is in danger of fire. And we also pray for the ruins who have been care to others as they need care themselves. We have needs for rain, Lord. We need rain, we're in a drought, but we thank you for it ahead of time. And please be with Ron's dog who is sick. Give Ron's dog healing and comfort. And now, Lord, we pray for those that are in our bulletin, Pastor Heather, Baby Milo, Margaret Scholl, Michael Allred, our people of Malawi and our friends there, the people of Ukraine, the people of Palestine and Israel, we pray for peace there, victims of abuse, those that are seeking jobs, those who are deployed in their families, our first responders in their families, and our homeless brothers and sisters, especially this week, Lord, as the rain comes. We pray for our street people that get wet and cold. We pray for all of God's creation, our country and our church. We lift up in silence 
any prayers that we hold in the corners of our hearts, the quietness of our hearts, for only you to know and understand. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. God is so faithful, and he's blessed us with so much, so with really grateful hearts, and I am, and so are you, so many joys. We offer back to God what we have with love and thanksgiving, as Mark offers a gift on the organ. Gracious God, we offer you our gifts. Multiply them so that they might help build your kingdom on earth and be of service to your body of Christ. In whose name we pray, amen. Now go forth from this place in peace to love and serve the Lord. Be blessed by the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. This was.
Bye, everybody. Have a good week. Bye. Go Bye. Chiefs. Yes. Not not 49ers. <laughs> Rebecca, so good to see you. Happy, happy birthday. I'm thinking of you. And your sister. Can't hear you. But your sister is something else. Oh, there's Anastasia. Have a good week, everybody. Thanks, Thank you, Pat. Good. Thanks, Mary. Have a good week. Thank you, Tom. I think it all worked today. I think yes. the zooming was good. I think the sound was good. I like it. I do too. And we could just notch it up just a little bit more. A, the volume just a bit more off, off of the mics. That would be great. Okay. Okay. I'll of work course. with Lars. I'll work with Lars. That's great. Thank you so much for your, for your everything, your ministry, Tom. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye, Ted. Bye, bye. Mary. Bye. Bye, Paul. Thank you.